So we're back for another episode of Believe in Boit with the team I would have brought to the World Championships had I qualified. I tried to balance commentary and competing at the same time and fell short of the invite so was not able to qualify. But Barish Akjos was able to qualify and I gave him this team to compete at the World Championships with. Uh, he was able to make it through day one and then 4-3 on in day two so one match short of uh, top cutting the World Championships so... Not too bad. He was able to make it onto stream as well. Round one, no, round three, day one, he was able to make it onto stream. Uh, so if you're interested, go back and watch that match. It's a very good one as well. So yeah, this is a team that I, I had built just because I still enjoy playing the game and I wanted to play some games on Showdown and I ended up finding the um, Assault Vest Electric Chen Pao was incredibly strong in the meta, uh, especially because of the Water Earth trees. You just turn into an electric type and just blast them back. No, no pun intended, with the Terror Blast. Uh, and you've got literally perfect coverage with those four moves. Assault Vest makes you actually pretty tanky. You can survive some significant hits, like Specstaz and Gleam from uh, Fluttermane. You can survive without going for Terror. Uh, then I wanted some speed control, got the wrong Moon. Roaring Moon I treated like a Talonflame. I'm so used to going for attack boosting acrobatics. Uh, but this one, I intentionally saw it as like a Talonflame slash a Tornadus. So I went with the speed boosting and it's just there for the speed control and some extra support. So I gave it Breaking Swipe for that extra support as well over something like Crunch. Because initially I did have a Chi Yu over the Arcanine slot and I had three Dark types. Didn't feel the need for Dark coverage. And when that changed to Arcanine, I still kept the Breaking Swipe because it was really nice. Especially paired with something like the Assault Vest of the Chen Pao. That actually makes it pretty tanky. Uh, Golden Go is a very, very good support. Uh, uh, not support, set up Pokemon. Uh, being supported by the Royal Moon is the sentence I was going for. Uh, so obviously we know what a Golden Go can do. Uh, Metal Coat was necessary for a KO. I can't remember which KO. The EV spreads are so old I can't remember what they do. But just trust. Uh, so Golden Go was uh, uh, the only special attacker on the team. I've been trying to find a way to fit a second special attacker on the team. Because five physical attackers and one special attacker is a little bit uncomfortable. But couldn't find a way that made sense, unfortunately. Uh, the Arcanine. With the Life Orb can do some really good damage. Not locked in with the Choice Band. Life Orb was free, so might as well go with that. Still got the Terra Normal Extreme Speed, so you can pair it with the Chen Pao and get some massive, massive damage. Uh, not quite to the extent of a Dragonite with the Choice Band, but it's com it's it's getting close. Like a Sucker Punch and an Extreme Speed with a Terra Normal will KO a lot of things, so it's still pretty good. I uh, went for Intimidate over Rock, he rock Heads with Head Smash and Rock Slide, because I just don't trust Head Smash in the slightest, and Intimidate's a good ability. Uh, Basket Legion is the best Pokemon in the format, so why would that not be on the team? It's better than Water Urshifu, like seriously. This is, this is not me memeing. I don't meme when it comes to these kind of things. Basket Legion is the best Pokemon in the format. You beat Fluttermane with a Choice Scarf because you're outspeeding just Oko with last respects. You beat the Water uh, Urshavus because you're, you're going to be resisting the Water type attacks and you're immune to the close combat. So it's an amazing counter to the two best Pokemon in the format, which makes it the best Pokemon in the format because adaptability is stupid busted. Like <laughs> when, you've t when you've lost some Pokemon from the Basket Legion or, or on your side, Last Respects becomes stupid busted. Breloom rounded out the team. I was trying, like, that was the sixth slot. I had no idea what I wanted in that slot. I went through, like, 50 different Pokemon, and I landed on Breloom. Breloom was the one that seemed to make the most sense. Spore is a pretty good move, uh, and Amoongus, I thought, was a bit too slow for the team. Uh, it still could be reasonable to put in that slot. I tried Brute Bonnet as well, but then just had a few, a few too many Dark types, I think. I think that Breloom made quite a lot of sense in this slot, but there's plenty of other slots that's could make uh, Pokemon that could make sense in that slot. Uh, if you wanted to try this team, feel free to adapt it. I don't think there's too many things that I could change about this without fundamentally changing the team. So this is as close to complete as I think this team could possibly be. So if you're interested in trying out the team, team ID is in the top right, as well as I paste down in the description. Let's get into some games. Um, that's not a team I expected to face. Uh, so they can trick me with Zoroark with Dondozo stuff. Which I'm not a fan of, but I'll leave with Roaring Moon so I can get Tailwind stuff going. So, Brenum is good here. Chempow is good here. Basculetion is pretty good here. Arcanine Intimidate could be good, but they could be oblivious, so it might not be good. And Golden Go could be good, but they might be unaware. So therefore, I'm going to bring these three. Just which one do I lead with? Spot an Azelf next to a Sorowok that's a ghost, so that could easily explode. I'm going to leave with Breloom. Basket Legion and Chempow on the back. They leave with Iron Bundle. That's not ideal because they'll outspeed my Roaring Moon and be able to Icy Wind. So in that case, I would probably go for Protect Acrobatics to put it in Mac Punch range. That's not a very good trainer card. Uh, 
Urshifu and his elf. Maybe Urshifu and his elf. Now, I am inclined to Terra Ghost my Breloom on the explosion as they are a Zoroark somewhere, but <laughs> I think I think that Tailwind and Spore is safer. The next turn I can just spoil the Urshifu as well. If they close combat KO my Roaring Moon, that's perfectly fine. Uh, they were Choice Scarf on there as Elf, so they still outsped my <laughs> my Roaring Moon. Okay, I'm Choice Scarfed into Tailwind. So hopefully they do actually just close combat KO me. That would be ideal. Nope, it is the Zoroark. So, fair enough. However, both Pokemon are going to be sleeping now. So, Choice Scarfed into Tailwind, so I have to switch out. Uh, and my Acrobatics is terrible as well now. So, like, it's going to be breaking swipe for the rest of the game. Because Acrobatics is abysmal. So, that may not be the worst thing, though. So, I'll switch into Chen Pao. And because it is a Zoroark... And I'm switching into Chen Pao. Zoroark has terrible defenses. This should just KO with three. Maybe even two. Because Zoroark has terrible defenses. That's fine. I will just do exactly the same thing next turn. Because this will get a round of potential Focus Sash as well. Now I will Ice Spinner the Azelf. It's going to stay asleep. I will Bullet Seed again. If their switch-ins are Dondozo and Tatsugiri, then they can't switch in the Zoroark. Or switch out the Zoroark. No, because they've got Ashfu in the back, so they don't have Dondozo and Tatsugiri. That's the whole point of Illusion, right? So, what was the other Pokemon they had? Because like, it definitely can still be one of Dondozo or Tatsugiri, but... I can't remember what the other Pokemon was. Yeah, that's massive damage. And this should KO, right? Yeah, two does it. <laughs> like, there we go. My my damage intuition is still very good. That Zoroark would be KO'd to two bullet seeds with a Chen Pao on the field. Even Pokemon as obscure as that. <laughs> like, my jam damage intuition is still pretty sweet. Do they stay asleep? They do. Nice. So things are looking pretty good right now. Because I know their choice on the Azelf, they won't have Protect. I, I strongly assume they will not have Protect, so that slot is just being KO'd. And it's Iron Bundle, okay. So that does outspeed my Brilliant still, but it does not outspeed my Chien Pao. Therefore, the play is now Terra Electric Terra Blast into Iron Bundle and Bullet Seed into Azelf. Because this will KO the Iron Bundle, I assume. This will KO the Azelf. So if they... They haven't terrored yet, so they could. They could terror ice and survive. That would be the least ideal situation, because then they could icy wind me. Azelf could outspeed and KO my Brilliant next turn, so. That would be the only real bad thing, but just to protect to stall out Tailwind, that's fair enough. And that's an easy KO with just one. Uh, is that all the turns of Tailwind? I think it is, right? So next turn I can Sucker Punch and Mac Punch the Iron Bundle. If they're a ghost, they become immune to Mac Punch, but then that surely allows Sucker Punch to KO the, um, the Iron Bundle. So I will Sucker Punch, I will Mac Punch, they will double protect, and I will lose. Yeah, this, this should be a pin, right? Because any any terror that Iron Bundle goes for is still KO'd to this combination, right? Like, if there's a terror ghost, the Sucker Punch goes first and the Mac Punch gets redirected into the Urshifu. But it is Terra Ice, so they're still weak to Mac Punch, so it's fine. So they needed to do that last turn. Like I said, Terra Ice was one of the ways they could have come back. Because then they had to survive a Terra Blast and got the Icy Wind. 
and then maybe woken up with the Azelf, but yeah, Sucker Punch is not going to work when I go first. Now this KOs, and we're sorted. So that was pretty good. I feel Dondozo may have been more effective for them. So, Silk Sword, Mac Punch. Ooh, that's almost a KO. Thank you for, for allowing me to find out. So, because they could have sucker punched my Breloom there and not allowed me to find out. But it was very kind of them to for me to see that I do not quite KO. But that was quite straightforward. Choice Scarf as Elf was quite funny. Outspeeding the, the Roaring Moon. But didn't really matter. I feel I think Choice Band is more effective on the Azelf there. Because you'll get way more KOs with the Terra Normal Explosion. Okay, pretty standard screens team, but there is a Landorus as well. Normally it would be the Incarnate Land... No, not Incarnate. Then Therian Landorus. Incarnate's unusual. Especially with the screens team. It might be Calm Mind or Nasty Plot. So gotta keep that in mind. So. Could try and spore through the team, but I don't think that is that great, considering there's Amoongus and there's Golden Go as one of the main setups. Definitely want to leave with my own Golden Go. I need to be wary of their Landorus. I don't think I need my Royal Moon here, because I'm going to outspeed most things except Landorus. I think I might go Chempow just to cover for that Landorus. Definitely want Basket Legion. Basket Legion comes to like 95% of games, because it's just so good. And then... I think I'm leaning towards Arcanine here. Breloom could help against the Azumarill. But Breloom is, like, terrible against Golden Go. Like, abysmal against Golden Go. Although Spore is still pretty good. Hmm, do I want extra insurance against Golden Go or just extra insurance against the Azumarill? I think, I think I'll go with... Arcanine here, because I can extreme speed the Azumarill as well, and Basculesian is still fine against Azumarill. Terra Electric Chem Power is, is still decent against Azumarill. But I think Arcanine or Breloom were reasonable there. It just depends on how quickly I've dealt with the Golden Go, whether Breloom's good or not. It's a cool trainer card. Is that a shiny? Uh, it's a Mastiff. That's its name, isn't it? Iron Hands in Rooms now, okay. So this is a pretty easy nasty plot. It's definitely nasty plot. Now, should I switch into Basket Legion here? Because I don't want to just take a Drain Punch. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to nasty plot and I'm going to switch to Basket Legion. Then I'm going to nasty plot again and then I'm going to switch into Arcanine as they well charge. So yeah, nasty plot. Switch to Basket Legion. If they Swords Dance, unfortunate. But... I would expect some kind of fighting move into the GM house slot. Swords Dance is entirely reasonable as well, and it would make sense on a screens team. There's already a Terra, which is interesting. Here comes the Terra Ground Earthquake into the Golden Go. Um, okay, that resists make it rain, but I literally don't care about Grimmsnarl. Like, I ignore Grimmsnarl completely with Golden Go, so I don't care about that. Like, sure, you get your screens, but... Just don't care about Graham's now. <laughs> so don't be a sword stance. It is a sword stance, okay, so. A bit unfortunate, but that's still fine. I can still go for a Shadow Ball here. Do I go for my second nasty plot? That might be greedy, because they're not assault best. This might be Terra Fairy, actually. That would surely get it. That would push it over the edge. It's very rare I Terra Fairy. But they've used their Terra. Like, they'll reflect it. But I'm going to Terra Fairy. Hmm. 
And I'm quite surprised game one. This is a Terra Fairy Vasca Legion, but there we go. Like, 90% of the time it's, it's last respects, but I don't usually have Vasca Legion on the field this early. It's, all, it's almost always in the back, but it just made sense to switch into a potential fighting type attack. There's the Reflect. Now, is this strong enough? Plus two and super effective adaptability Terra Blast. Nice and strong, Vasca Legion, please. That's a cool Terra Blast animation. Like, this is not going to be strong enough. But that was cool. Yeah, not quite. But Wild Charge will KO. Oh, it's just Thunder Punch. That's okay. Because that won't KO. Nice. And then... Should I make it rain here? I should, shouldn't I? Because they can't KO both Pokemon. Yeah, I'll just make it rain and, and Terra Blast here. If they parting shot, something's taking a Terra Blast and to make it rain, so this is perfectly fine. So Thunder Punch wasn't strong enough. Wild Charge would have been, but they would have also KO'd themselves. That's fine. Is this going to be strong enough to KO the Grimstar? I don't expect... Oh, they tried to parting shot a Goblin Go. What a fool. I mean, maybe they were just intentionally sacking the Grimstar. It would be ideal if Grimstar does not get KO'd here. I mean, it's not going to be, because that did nothing. But, yeah, that doesn't give them the paid switch into something in the back, because now I just get to make it rain and KO the Iron Hands again. But that was decent damage. So now... I still expect make it rain to KO the Iron Hands, but I shouldn't KO the Grimmsnarl based on that damage. So, do I go for a second last spot and just Terra Blast into Iron Hands? No, I'll just Shadow Ball, I think. Because if they parting shot the Basket Legion, then I'm still getting a... Okay, they didn't, that's fine. Then I was still going to get something into the um, Pokemon that switches in. That's a really cool animation. That's the first time... I think that's the first time I've seen Fairy Terra Blast in-game. In My practice has always been elsewhere, so... Ooh, not quite enough. Ooh, special defense drop. Necessary. I might get the KO now. But that's not going to KO, right? Yeah, because my bulk is amazing. Like, my EV spreads are just busted, so... Now, only Lander is outsped, right? What else was there? There was a Moongus, a Zoomerill. Zoomerill's going to Aqua Jet. Okay, a Zoomerill can Aqua Jet. Now, I could very reasonably protect my Golden Go here from the Aqua Jet. Terra Blast is still going to be reasonable damage. I can't Terra Electric anymore with the Chem Power, so that's not very good. Oh, I am actually quite weak to Azumarill now. Hmm. And they're going to Parting Shot my Basket Legion as well. So that's not ideal. I'm going to make it rain here. Now we'll get some damage into the Azumarill. Now, did they predict the Protect? Like, that's what I'm going for. Because if they predict the Protect and play Rough slash Liquidation the Basket Legion, then I'm in a good position, because I'll get to make it rain into whatever comes in. What is that last Pokemon? It's their own Golden Ghost, so... Well, it's not unreasonable. They didn't predict the Protect, so... That's fair enough. But this gives me the paid switch into the Arcanine so I can threaten the Golden Go before it goes for a nasty plot. That was nothing. What? Like, I know I've been parting shotted, but what? Um, okay, not ideal. Yeah, this Azumarill is going to body me now. I'm going to switch into the Chempow. They just make it rain and win, right? They've got me pretty pinned with this Azumarill and Golden Go now because I went for my Terra Fairy. If I saw a Terra Electric, I was looking great. But a Terra Fairy was clearly not the play. How many turns of screens is left? Okay. Too many. I can't protect either, so 
Yeah, I'm not seeing a way out of this. I'm going to double the Golden Go, hoping that they attack. And then somehow I can overwhelm the Azuril? Question mark? Okay, so... That doesn't work out so well. Now play Rush to KO my Chiampao, and then I am absolutely bodied. At least that KO'd, but it was always going to. And a play rough miss would be lovely. Alas. Not to be. Now, it's still not over, because an intimidated Aqua Jet shouldn't KO Arcanine. Yeah, so switch into Arcanine here. Oh, it would have been better to switch into Arcanine previous turn, switch straight back out into Pao and switch Arcanine back in. That would have been much better. Because I'd have got two Intimidates on the Azumarill. I'm going to just protect here. No, because then I can't, because then they make it rain KO the... Hmm. This is just whether they protect the Golden Go from the Flare Blitz or not. They might be specs, who knows. But on this screen, they're nasty plot. Like, on this screen, they're nasty plot. They're on, the, on this team, they're nasty plot because they're screens, is the sentence I was going for. So, I'm going to attack. If they protect the Golden Go, I definitely lose. If they protect the Golden Go, I definitely lose. So. Unless this crits. Even then, it won't KO. Yeah, not much. And it's not even Aqua Jet as well, so that was good, good of them to recognize that Liquidation would have been... Or needs to be the play. Yeah, there we go. So if that would have been Protect on the Arcanine, uh, then that little bit of chip into the Azumarill might put it in range after the Reflect wears off. But that's in two turns, isn't it? Yeah, it was in two turns. So if I'd have Protected there, then Flare Blitz into the Golden Go... Afterwards, death, like, surely KOs, even with a Reflect. Then Liquidation KOs me. I've done a little bit of extra damage with the Terra Blast, like, this much damage. Like, that much. Yeah, and then two more Terra Blasts would have KO'd the Azumarill, because then... Oh, yeah, that was an easy, easy KO, because their, their play rough shouldn't be able to two-shot me with an Intimidate, Right? So yeah, that, that that was pretty close, but Azumarill was annoying there because I used my Terra, Terra too early. If I kept my Terra for the Chen Pao, I'd have been still pretty good, but a bit too early on the on the trigger there. That's a cool team. What do I do against that? What's the Barrascuda doing there? I'm not sure what the Barrascuda is for. I think every, everything else makes sense, but Barrascuda just looks out of place to me. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Right, so I think Brillin was a lead is very reasonable. I don't think I need my Roaring Moon. Like, Brillin is great against Cresselia stuff so long as it is not safety goggles. If it's safety goggles, the matchup just becomes horrible. But if it's not safety goggles, it is entirely reasonable. So. Brillin and Golden Go is what I'm seeing here. And. Hmm. These three are also very reasonable. I want Basque Legion because of Cresselia. And then Chen Pao is great here. And Arcanine is great here. I think because of the Defiant on the Zapdos, I'm going to go with the Chen Pao over the Arcanine. <coughs> Hope the Barrascute comes to the match, because that... I'm curious why that's on this team. I think everything else is very reasonable. But having something so frail... And, like, it, it's nice and speedy, but... Who knows? It's not a very cool trainer card. Okay, Zabdos Cresselia. So they can... 
attack my Golden Go if they would like, but if they theoretically do not have anything for the Golden Go right now. So I will spore the Zapdos, and I will Nasty Plot. They are safety goggles on the Zapdos, and then I lose. But we'll see how fast the Zapdos is. It theoretically should outspeed my Breloom. It is just a Detect, that's fine. It's just a free Nasty Plot. So obviously Hindsight Spore with it into Cresselia is better, but if they Trick Room, I didn't care. If they just attacked, I didn't care. Because then Golden Go is still Nasty Plotted right now. Like they've got nothing that's threatening Golden Go right now. If this is a Trick Room, then I should just be able to Spore the... Oh, okay, Icy Wind is, is worst case. That's fair enough. So then now it is going to be Protect Breloom and make it rain. And that should KO the Zapdos and put the Cresselia very low. And if it's Focus Slash on the Zapdos, I just get to go for a Mac Punch next turn. Ooh, Cresselia outspeeds the Zapdos. That is not expected. So it was a slow Zapdos, and it's acrobatics, so that's fine. Does that mean it's Focus Sash? The underspeeding Cresselia would be odd, but yeah, there we go, that's fine. <coughs> so they weren't threatening the Golden Go at all, so that's perfectly good. And again, they have to commit something into the Breloom, freeing up the Golden Go, because the Golden Go is the big threat right now. Regidrago doesn't threaten it. Like, Earth Power is something. But it's not going to be strong enough. Is it worth going for Terra Ghost just so I survive the Psy Shock? Probably not, right? Because Mac, Mac Punch and Make It Rain is just another KO. So, and like, they don't threaten the KO on my Golden Go right now. Like, Earth Power Helping Hands probably still wouldn't get me unless they're lifeful. Another icy wind. Breloom's still here. Like, you already outsped. That should have been a side shot, but I am glad I didn't waste my Terra Ghost. Or Terra. Two Ghost. Because the speed doesn't matter on the Golden Go. You're just not threatening it. And there's the KO. I'm back to neutral now, so. But I'm still doing great damage. And I've cleared half their team already. And there's the Barrascuda. Okay, they did bring Barrascuda. Okay, so I'm definitely going to go for the Mac Punch into that instead then. Because then I can just put it into range of Sucker Punch KO next turn. Yeah, it's Mac Punch into Barras... Nope, thank you. Joy's gone. Mac Punch into Barrascuda. And I will just protect this turn. Because Barrascuda is the main thing that threatens Golden Go. So if I just put that into Sucker Punch range, they can't threaten the Golden Go next turn. And I just get to go for Make It Rain and win. Right? I'm struggling to see how this goes wrong. I mean, protect Barrascuda and Dragon Energy KO the Breloom means that I can't do that, and then they still threaten, but then I still have a whole Basculegion and Chiampao waiting in the back. And the, Bas the Barrascuda theoretically doesn't threaten the, the Basculegion. It could have Throat Chop, I guess, but does it still get Throat Chop? Did in the last generation. Yeah, look how, look how frail Bas Barrascuda is. That's a two shot. And Earth Power would immediately just end the game. Yep. <laughs> Very straightforward. Because I will just Mac Punch Barrascuda for the KO. I will make it rain. Single target might KO, but probably not. Although it is Metal Coat boosted. Because we are back to neutral. That's the KO. So they just didn't really bring anything that threatened Golden Go. There's the Dragon Energy now. Congratulations, you dealt with Breloom, but Golden Go just completely swept. And some teams, some teams aren't prepared for Golden Go. That's, that's what I found on when I've been practicing. Some teams just do not respect Golden Go in the slightest. And you just get to free Nasty Plot and plus do make it rain. So uh, I'm going to go for Basque Legion. Doesn't really matter. And that is a very straightforward game. So, like, a, a Golden Go can definitely just do that in some games. It 
did really well at the World Championships as well. Like that, the Golden Ghost supported by Iron Hands and Amoongus teams all seem to do very well. It's Terra Fire. Interesting. It's usually Terra Steel to resist fairies. But even if I hadn't lost the Breloom, I'm pretty sure Last Respects would have picked up that KO. So that was pretty, pretty straightforward, I would say. And just to showing that you, you need to have things for Golden Go. You cannot disrespect Golden Go. Okay. Ursaluna is one of the trickier teams to deal with. If it's Golgo's Cresselia, this is like one of the worst matchups there could possibly be. So, Brenham's lead. Hmm, Golden Go is not that great here. It's all right, but not that great. Definitely bring Basket Legion. Definitely bring Champau. Now, Arcanine is not unreasonable. Hmm. If they leave Grimmsnarl, then Golden Go is way better. Yeah, I'm gonna go Golden Go. Chimpal's still very good. And Basket Legion. Poor Arcanine. Poor Arcanine. Arcanine's still great here, but... Like, if they didn't have Grimmsnarl, I would have brought Arcanine instead of Golden Go. But because they have Grimmsnarl, like, when they have Grimmsnarl, it just gives Golden Go a free turn to Nasty Plot, and then it becomes a huge threat. That's a cool training card. So please do live with Grimmsnarl. It would be very, very kind of you. It's not a Grimmsnarl. Okay, so... How fast is the Urshifu? Could I go for Bullet CKO into the Urshifu? I definitely am going for Bullet Seek into the Urshifu, because they could Terra with the Heatran as well. And I will be greedy and nasty plot here, because they have to double the Golden Go to KO it. This is surely the Terra Grass coming out from the Heatran, right? Like so. So they were immune to Spore, but I don't care about that. Like, I'll, I'll deal with the Heatran later. So, Heat Wave won't KO my Golden Go unless it's Life Orb. So, like so, they had to double the Golden Go to be able to deal with it. But now, Brilliant survives because Heat Wave can't KO it um, because of the Focus Sash. 90% of the time. But, and they were fast anyway, so it made no difference. But now, they have Terrid, they are weak to Ice Spinner. And Bullet Seed, theoretically. Thank you, Brelin. It was Life Orb. Okay, so actually, they didn't need to Surging Strikes the Golden Go. Okay, get three. Don't you dare get two. Nice. Now, because that is a timid Heatran... They do, and because they're Life Orb, they do not have enough bulk to survive the Ice Spinner. I'm very confident of that. There is Grimmsnarl. That could have Fake Out. So I think this is the time for Terra Ghost. Just in case there is Fake Out. However, if they Fake Out the Chien Pao, So surely double protect is better, right? Just just in case. Because a reflect would allow the Heatran to survive as well, actually, and then I can just go for Mac Punch and Ice Spinner into it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play it safe here. This may be too oh, I can't double protect, I'm a salt vest, I'm an idiot. Um I'm gonna do this instead. Change of plans. Forgot I couldn't protect. <laughs> Last minute decision that might come back to bite me. But with the Assault Vest, I'm living whatever the um, Heatran throws at me. Am I too scared of Fake Out? 
And if they have Fake Out, it's into Brelin, right? No, it wouldn't be, because they're faster than the Heat Trend. They wouldn't need to. They can Fake Out the Chen Pao. It was just Reflect. Okay, so this is this is better way around, because this now won't KO the Heat Tran, but it will next turn. Like so. That is the Heat Wave. Does not KO the Brelim now. And we're tanking that comfortably. There is the burn that we love to see. However, I am still definitely strong enough to KO this Heat Tran with an Ice Burn. So, now I just get to go for the Spore into the Grim Snarl. And I spin it into the Heat Tran. It's a good thing that burn didn't happen on the Brelim. That would have been very bad. So it's not the worst thing that has happened to the Chien Pao. But I've lost my Dark Titan, so they can do prankster stuff to me. Thunder Wave would be bad. Thunder Wave would not be ideal. Just Taunt. Okay, so I can't Spore. Fair enough. <clears throat> but I can still Mac Punch. And I shall still Mac Punch. In fact, I will Bullet Seed instead. Because Ice Spinner will just KO the Heatran. Bullet Seed will still do great damage. Personally, I'm not a fan of Taunt on Grimmsnarl. It's obviously a good move, but I have preferences for many other moves instead. Uh, I think it is optimal to Bullet Seed the Heatran as well. Because the Ice Spinner will KO the Heatran. And then the Bullet Seed will be redirected. However, if they switch into something like Ursaluna just to try and uh, keep the Heatran, it would do massive damage to that. So, it's perfectly fine. They did not reflect... So this is going to be big damage, because this is Technician Boosted Bullet Seed with a Chen Pao helping it with Sword of Ruin. So this is going to chunk the Grimmsnarl. Watch this. I mean, d wait until it hits, it hits a few times. <laughs> because, you know, it looks weak at the start. But it really adds up, especially if you critical hit. Now five might do it. Oh, so close. Oh, so it's so just psyched out there by the little pause. But is that... Burn tick. I think I, I think I survive. Perfectly EV'd. My EVs are just so good. <laughs> like, I survive in, like, minuscule red so often. My EVs are so good. But there is Moltres as the last. Okay. I have Basque Legion as my final one. Hmm. Feeling so confident anymore. Depends on how fast the Moltres is. I can't protect. Like, I'm still taunted, right? Yeah, I'm still taunted. Yeah, I'll Mac Punch and Ice Spinner the Moltres. If they protect, then they're going to win. Like so. So Mac Punch into the Grim Snarl was clearly better there. Hmm. You know, that should, no, that should definitely be Mac Punch into the Grim Snarl because then the Ice Spinner would put them in range of Wake Rush, right? Yeah, so that was just a bad play from me. Like, obviously the burn was was killer. If I didn't get burned, I was still perfectly fine here because I wouldn't have been chipped down like this. And then I could just double into the Moltres next turn and be perfectly fine. And because I don't have my Terra available anymore, yeah, I need Wave Crash to just KO the Moltres. Do they have Reflect? Spirit Break, Light Screen, Taunt. Like, surely the last one is Reflect. But this needs to KO the Moltres. And I'm pretty sure it won't, even though I believe in Basque Legion. They have reflected, right? Like, I'm not making up that they've reflected now, because that did way less than it should have done if they hadn't reflected. Yeah, Citrus Berry is standing on it, so it's a shame I wouldn't be able to spoil that. And single target is going to get me. So, pretty sure I was fine if I went, if I didn't get burned. Like, I'm very confident I was fine, but also that was me throwing the game by not Mac punching the Grim Snarl. Because then I'd have been able to still have a Breloom and a Basque Legion against not a Grim Snarl, and I'd have been okay. Okay, so that is a team that popped up really early, right? That won a tournament 
really early on into regulation D. Now the Mimikyu is the awkward thing. Because I'd like to go Roaring Moon, but if they lead with Mimikyu, that's not ideal. But it's fine if I go with Golden Go, because then I can just double the Mimikyu. Chienpao is fantastic here. Breloom is not that great. Arcanine is quite reasonable. Basculegion is busted as ever. And because they have the Regidrago, I am again inclined to lean towards the Basculegion because it's got Terra Fairy available. However, I'm going to go with Arcanine for this one, I think. So I can still just extreme speed the Regidrago and then Dragon Energy isn't as threatening. That's a cool training card. And there is the Mimikyu. So they're threatening Tailwind and Trick Room. Interesting. I mean, I can just Acrobatics and... Ooh, do I need to use the Terror already just to survive a play rough? But then I can be taunted next turn. I think it might be worth just going for a Protect with Roaring Moon and see what they do. I don't think they had... I don't think they had Shadow Claw, so Shadow Sneak wouldn't be that bad. It is Tailwind, and this is assumedly Play Rough. I don't remember it having Shadow Claw. Yeah, like so. So that was a free nasty plot and a stalled out Tailwind turn, so that's good. Then this turn, I can, because they've gone for Tailwind, they should not go for Trick Room, right? So I can go for my own Tailwind. And... I'm just thinking about Shadow Balling the Mimikyu. Because then... Well, actually, I can second nasty plot. Yeah, because next turn I can, I can then just Acrobatics clear the Mimikyu. That seems greedy, but... I don't think they're threatening my Golden Go here outside of Shadow Sneak, which isn't that much. So it's just be complete when Storm is just play Roughs and Shadow Sneaks. And if they Shadow Sneak, they didn't touch my Roaring Moon at all. If they're next level, they'll go for Taunt and play rough into the Roaring Moon, because then that would either KO the Roaring Moon if I don't Terra, or stop the Tailwind if I do Terra. That would be a good play. Just Icy Winds. That's fair enough. My Roaring Moon's pretty bulky. Especially with that crit, play rough should not KO my Roaring Moon. Ooh, that's nice. Don't tend to get too lucky these days, so I'll take it. So I will now Acrobatics the Mimikyu. I will make it rain and KO both Pokemon. There's the Shadow Sneak. But yeah, that's not threatening too much. And just Icy Wind again, so... They'll have the speed advantage, but... I can just protect on the last turn of Tailwind, unless it's an Urshifu, and then I can't. But this is easily a double KO. Big damage. Oh, it was Focus Sash on Tornadus. That's a bad item. I do not recommend. You can easily bulk out your Tornadus to be KO'd to very little, so I am not a fan of Focus Sash. Good in this situation, but do not recommend. The only benefit that I can see of having Focus Sash, like if it's free, sure, uh, is you get to do more Bleak Wind Storm damage. But Tornadus isn't there to do Bleak Wind Storm damage, it's there to set Tailwind and then miss Bleak Wind Storms. So, there is their own goal and go. So... They have to Shadow Ball KO to KO my Golden Go, right? So 
that mean I can Terra Steel and survive? And this is the last turn of their Tailwind, right? Yeah. That might be a big throw, but I'm going to Terra. No, I can't Terra because I've Terra the Roaring Moon. I'm an idiot. Right, so. Break and swipe. And just protect. Just Icy Wind again. Am I living? My EVs are so good. <laughs> if this was Make It Rain, I'm going to be sad. Yeah, good. Because that KO's their, their Tailwind now. That's good. Like, my EVs are so busted. Nice bit of chip on the Golden Go as well. Oh, attack drop. Yes, let's go. Very fortunate that I got that from the Raven Swipe. Now I'd assume Urshifu. If it's Red Drago, that's alright. It is Urshifu, that's fine. Now they can get a double KO if they Aqua Jet and if they Shadow Ball my Golden Go again. So, minus three with that. Minus two with that. But I've still got my Tailwind, so my Golden Go might still outspeed theirs. It depends on speed tiers now. So I will... Attempt to acrobatics the Urshifu. I will attempt to make it rain. Because I'm at plus three, it's going to do massive damage. But they protect on the last turn of Tailwind. That's perfectly fine, because Urshifu is taking huge damage now. It's just U-turn. For some reason. But I don't know why you would lock into that. But you only run U-turn if you're choice, and... you got nothing to switch into. <laughs> I'm not sure why that was U-turn. But my EVs are sometimes not perfect, but <laughs> that was good damage regardless. That is now going to be extreme speed range. And they cannot KO my um, Arcanine unless it's a make it rain, and then that doesn't KO my Golden Go. Therefore, Shadow Ball is now a KO into their Golden Go. So, extreme speed. And rage quit. <laughs> is that my internet? It better not be mine, internet. But we're counting that as a rage quit. Well done, Arcanine. You joined the field and made them rage quit. 